There we go. Hello, Lord family. How's it going? Good to see you guys. Hello, Kevin. How are you doing? Doing good. I, I just saw this chat from Allison where she was talking about the salad family. And I'm like, salad? But I think I got to figure it out. It's Scott, Allison, Liam, oh. Ava. And D is their cat, but I can't remember what their cat's name or is. Or is it Davini? Oh. I, I don't know. Maybe you're right. No, <laughs> you're probably right. No, you're probably right. Um, From the was, salad. That's great. <laughs> I wish we salad. had a family name. It would just be J and L, though, or L, J. And... Uh, L, J. It's just my is initials. He... Yeah, mine, ours is K, M, C, H, K. K, M, C, H, K. Yeah, nothing you can really do with that one either. No, salad is good. And the fact that they actually have it in the order, like, <laughs> like you know, husband, wife, oldest son, uh, youngest daughter. Luke got it right. Okay, good Cat. job, Luke. Okay. Nice. <laughs> All right. Good to see well, you guys. Uh, Jacob's here. <laughs> Jacob, how you doing? Good to hear from you. Melanie. Jacob Bracey's here even. Hey, Bob hey. and Diane. What? Welcome, Bob and Diane. Glad that you guys are here. No way. Uh, it was cool. Bob and Diane uh, joined us last week when I was doing the music in my office. Oh, yeah. And both of them had a couple of uh, great songs. In fact, Bob, They're the ones I'll that tripped you up, right? No, no, that was Delaney oh. O'Haver. Delaney. Uh, but Bob, I should let you know, this Sunday during our live stream, our Sunday live stream, uh, we're actually doing the song It Is Well With My Soul, uh, partly inspired from our Tuesday wow. chat last week. Yeah. <laughs> See, another reason to show up for community chat. You show up to community chat and you might end up inspiring the worship you pastor. You can change to do a the song. whole world. <laughs> the little world of Laurelwood, Sunday mornings. Oh, funny. <laughs> Oh, man. Well, tell so, us how you guys are doing in the chat, too. We'd love to hear more about how's your family, what you guys are doing this week, anything changing for you all. I see Monica in the chat. Hello. Hello, Monica. Monica. Sorry, Kevin, yeah. I cut you off. What were you going to say? No, I, I was just going to say that um, while while uh, things are definitely changing, we were, Luke and I were talking. Uh, it's been a day, says Monica. Uh-oh. Oh, one one of those days. Hey, the good news is, Monica, school is over. Uh, you can just relax and have some uh, community chat with your there friends. There you go. That's what um, you do after a long day of school. You sign up for <laughs> Lorewood live streams. Oh, that's hilarious. I love it. Hey, Soriana's with us. Welcome. Glad hello. that you are here. And Phil's uh, here, too. Hello, hello. Phil Ball in the house. No, I, I was just going to say that, yeah, so much has changed. Um, uh, Luke and I were talking about before uh, we went live, we were talking about how the NFL draft, which happened last week, right. was the most <laughs> unique draft I've ever seen. Not that I watched <laughs> the NFL draft. Usually, you know, they're in this like big auditorium right. and, you know, like, like Roger Goodell's on stage. He's the NFL commissioner. Uh, you know, this time roger goodell is just sitting in his office yeah no audience just reading from a card with like a tv behind him and it was so weird <laughs> so weird so awkward yeah not only that but all the shows that are like that now you know all the like late night talk shows yeah, yeah and jimmy fallon all, and... <laughs> yeah all the like the good morning america stuff and the the talk show Someone stuff hanging all... out in their their bedroom or their office <laughs> trying to run a whole <laughs> You know, million dollar show over how much it is. I don't know. <laughs> you know, honestly, it makes me feel better, Luke. Like uh -huh. here we are, you know, little little Laurelwood Baptist Church, yep. and we have about the same production quality as some of these multi million <laughs> right. dollar shows. So I'm like, we're doing pretty good. Yeah, like, and after Laurel... this ends, we can still match them based on uh, <laughs> if we just follow that line of logic. You know, we can keep up with them, maybe. <laughs> No, I just think it. I just think it's so cool, man. We are literally at the same level as the Jimmy Fallon show. So, way to go, Laurelwood! Wow. <laughs> Lacey's had their fourth online birthday party just today. Whoa! Just today, think, you had four online, or like the fourth was today? I think the fourth was today. That, that I don't seems know. Extreme. I, I can't imagine four <laughs> online birthday parties in one day. <laughs> I can barely imagine handling one. <laughs> Oh, and Jacob Furtick has school shenanigans, some days longer than others. Yeah. What you gonna do? Okay, David, David, uh, I was right this time. Okay. It was this, this month. This month, yeah. <laughs> That's a lot of, a lot of April birthdays. My goodness. 
I, I want to. I kind of want to hear how those online birthday parties are going. I mean, what do you do? I mean, do you we, sing? Like, does everyone try to sing together at the same we've time? We've been doing that during youth group, at least. We've have everyone in Zoom trying to sing as loud and terrible as possible. But like, you when you get more than two or three people on Zoom, they like cancel each other out. Does it ever even? I work? mean, it's it's terrible. Our our youth group tradition is actually to sing as terribly as possible. So doing it over Zoom is actually really fitting for us because. <laughs> It pretty much just makes it terrible no matter what you try to do, right? <laughs> nice. <laughs> Virtual pinata from Phil. That's a good idea. I don't... Is there a program that does that? <laughs> just... <laughs> wow. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. The, the half-second leg behind the singing uh, adds a ton as well. Uh, because then I try to sing. It was like one time, like you and Sam, when you were testing the the Zoom. Oh man, yeah. You, you and Sam were trying to play the guitar at the same time, and I was just sitting there listening, uh, like as a yeah. viewer. And I'm like, I'm like, wow, this is really, really awkward. <laughs> just you know, he's singing on a different beat than I'm playing. Yeah, I think it's fine. I think it's, it's a only style. A half, it's a style nowadays. Half seconds. Yeah, Come it's on. fine. <laughs> Hey, uh, before we introduce our special surprise mystery guest, uh, I have just a couple of things I want to share. Next Tuesday's community chat is going to be um, a pretty special one. I haven't even it, told Apparently, Luke. it's so epic. Yeah, you won't even tell me. I haven't even told Luke because I wanted him. I'm a little bit to, hurt. No, I wanted him to experience <laughs> uh, the excitement and the surprise in real time along with the rest of okay. you. All right. Okay. Fair enough. Okay, so anyway, next Tuesday's community chat, uh, we're going to have a special edition focusing on uh, teachers, and we're actually inviting teachers from our church to join us on the live chat, and uh, I, I know there's a lot of parents who are watching this live chat, you know, I know, uh, you know, the Powells and the Balls and the Hagans are pretty regular on this uh -huh. community chat, and so I thought it'd be really cool to have some teachers to kind of let teachers share their perspective uh Ooh. and then also allowing you know all 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 the parents and everyone on the chat to just you know uh respond in with maybe questions or you know hey ha you know how are we praying for you because we're on this together right so that's cool that's cool luke my question for you okay. any guesses we're gonna have not one not two but three laurelwood teachers three on the teachers. live stream oh my can goodness. you name can you guess <laughs> Who the three teachers are? Go. Mm. Let's see if you got this. I feel like one of them's probably Angie. Angie? Angie Braithwaite's one. Okay, okay. Uh, is Anna Ball on it? Anna Ball is a second okay, one. Okay, okay. Okay. Uh, third one. Third. How third much money one? do I get if I guess it right? You get zero dollars. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. So Monica. Can I, can I phone a friend and chat? to <laughs> Who's the third, guys? Who is it? So Monica had Angie and Anna. Okay. Uh, Phil says there's about a dozen. Um, Let's see. Oh, there's Krista. Apparently, apparently I, I told Melanie. Did I tell Melanie? I forgot I told Melanie. Whoops. Phil says Jenny. Oh, that'd be good. But it's not Jenny. Krista? Well, she's not She's not a I, teacher right now. I guess it's she's training me. Yeah. Yep. Who am I forgetting? Starts with an L. Luke. <laughs> Luke Jack, Lori <laughs> no. Finn. Lori Finn. It is okay. Go. Wow. Okay. Cool. You did it. Yes. You did it. <laughs> With a little help from you, but hey, I got the first two on my own. So yes. So next next Tuesday, uh, we're gonna have a special teacher edition. Okay. With Lori Finn, Angie Braithwaite, and Anna Ball. Uh, and yeah, Anna Ball chatting in. Lori Finn, absolutely correct. It's gonna be great. Uh, Luke Jack is my favorite teacher. Says I have taught Zach so many things. <laughs> Zach, I thought I was your favorite teacher, man. I I spent years years working on the piano with you. Come I on, guess you're killing that's me. True. <laughs> like like how? What was it? Like uh, every other Wednesday, we would get together and work on piano. I feel so hurt right now. Hey, but uh, I gave him like two guitar lessons, so you know. <laughs> so it counts. I don't know. <laughs> oh anyway oh, so that next sounds tuesday, great yeah that yeah, sounds awesome next tuesday is going to be amazing uh pleading the fifth on kevin's call out wow okay and and maybe um, as a part of the special parents who are struggling with their kids being in school you can bring your students 
your kids there and they can get free tutoring <laughs> in the chat. Just ask some questions, throw out your homework. What are you struggling yes. with? Yeah, that's what we should do. So Angie, Anna, and Lori, all three of them are prepared to give free tutoring to your kids. <laughs> uh, no, don't, don't. I. It's not true. <laughs> It's not true. Well, hey, Luke, should we uh, switch yes, to our I special think that would guest? Be great. You want to introduce her? So our special guest, uh, as as I drum as roll. I've kind of talked, drum roll please, drum roll please. <laughs> uh, our special guest working the front line <clears throat> in a hospital at uh, Providence um, in in Portland, uh, working as a registered nurse in the labor and delivery section. Please welcome Amanda Whippin. Woo! Amanda. Hi. Thank you, Amanda. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Thank you for being here. No problem. Thank you for having me. Yes, yes, yes. It is. Uh, it is really, really cool. Um, you know, we we talk about front lines and we talk about uh, you know heroes and we say these kinds of words. Um, I, I just want to say I, on behalf of me and Luke and I think all the people on this chat, mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Amanda. Legitimately, thank you for uh, working and and I mean for all intents and purposes, you're putting yourself in a hospital where there is COVID-19 patients and uh, you're doing it um, day in and day out, helping moms deliver babies. You were saying that you've had moms that have tested positive as they've delivered babies. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for what you're doing, Amanda. Thank you for how you're helping our community during this COVID-19 season. Thank you for all that you are. And I'm glad that you're here today. Thanks. It's we. I don't, I mean, I guess we, uh, we're nurses, not for the praise or anything like that, but so it's kind of, it's just, it feels weird for you to say thank you, but <laughs> cause that's just what we do. And that's who a big part of me is, but mm. I appreciate your saying that. <laughs> yeah. And, and I think, you know, you, Amanda represent, uh, thousands and thousands of healthcare workers in our city and in Portland in mm -hmm. our, in the entire region. Um, and, and so I think it's special that uh, you um, you go to our church and that we have this opportunity to kind of do a little bit of a live stream with you. Uh, one of the questions I'm curious, just because I know for me and probably many other people, Amanda, um, I haven't been to a hospital in months. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm kind of trying to stay away from hospitals, yeah, right? Please do. <laughs> yeah. So t tell us a little bit, just just because I think a lot of us are curious, what has life been like before COVID-19? Like what was kind of a typical day? Um, mm -hmm. And what is a typical day like now uh, in the middle of this uh, COVID-19? So, I mean, just going into work is totally different because the minute you walk in the door, there are people there with big shields on and masks and they take your temperature and they ask you if you've had any symptoms. Um, and once you pass that checkpoint, I mean, that's at every entrance. Wow. You go to your unit. Um, we, I'm on my unit. We're not allowed to wear our own scrubs. We have to change into hospital issued scrubs. Um, and the minute you walk into the hospital, you have to have a mask on, which is something we've never done before. And universal masking. Um, the halls are a lot more empty than they have been. There's no visitors. There's no um, really. I mean, even the auxiliary staff is cut down. Um, so once you get onto the unit it's just you really have to it sounds so silly but you have to like look at people to even know who they are because they're so garbed up and they're just their masks and their shield and everything um so we never had to do any of that before and um even when you're talking to your patients you feel like you're not they can't tell when you're smiling they can't tell if you're a kind face or you know it's that's something that's been an obstacle to overcome because you need to build those personal relationships with your patients and you, it's hard to do that it's harder to do that now and have them to be able to trust you you know so i think that's one of the the biggest things that has changed from pre to post um you know there's always a lot of policies and procedures changing every day because we want to refine and become the best that we can be to take care of the patients in a safe way so it's just staying on top of those um, changes all the time. And um, yeah, I mean, you never know what's gonna come. So we're also being pulled to do jobs that we're not necessarily comfortable with um, or in the nursing realm that, that I like, it's not my wheelhouse, but because the greater need needs it, that's where we go. And um, yeah, it's, 
it's just constant adaptability and flexibility. That's just the name of the game at this point. Mm. Wow. Yeah, it sounds sounds very intense, sounds a bit chaotic and mm. I'm sure there's some fear and some some hardship within that. It sounds uh, very difficult and I think that's part of the reason why we're all saying thank you and people in the yeah. chat or I don't know if you can see it are saying thank you yeah, Amanda can, and thank you guys. Yeah. <laughs> because I think um you know a lot of us it, it just sounds difficult to us. Mm. It's like I, I can't imagine being in that world. So just thank you for mm -hmm. that. And uh, chat as well as you guys are watching, um, feel free to chime in. If you guys have any questions for Amanda, things that um, you are wondering about, Kevin and I have been able to talk with Amanda a little bit before this, as we were setting up and, you know, we're just so ignorant. I think of what's really going on in hospitals. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to chime in but kevin if you maybe have another one for amanda yeah you know what, one of the questions that uh one of the questions that we were talking about before we went live with amanda uh just because i'm i like lisa i'm totally ignorant you know when it when it comes to uh you know covid19 on the front lines in the hospitals and the healthcare type stuff i i just don't know like i've read articles or whatever but one of the questions i have which is a totally ignorant question and I'll just ask it again, Amanda, and you can just pretend like we, you didn't already answer yeah, it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but um, w when a mom comes in to labor and delivery and they test positive for COVID-19, uh, does the baby contract it in utero? Uh, in, in other words, does the baby come out uh, having COVID-19? From what we understand now, so I know we talked about this earlier, so I'm gonna just repeat some stuff. Um, from what we understand now, that does, that does not happen. Um, it's something that it's a droplet disease and it's passed through tiny, tiny droplets. Um, so sneezes, coughs, even speaking um, from what we understand about the infection now, uh, that's how it's passed um, from person to person. So hence the six feet apart and the, the masks that you wear, the masks that you see people wearing, it's not to protect themselves, it's to protect the other person. So from the, you're protecting somebody else from getting anything from your mouth or your mucous membranes. Um, so no babies, we don't, we're not seeing that we have seen babies test positive for COVID-19, but that is because they are in close proximity to mom. Um, they're not, they haven't been in an isolate or something like that. Um, right now our precautions are that babies are put six feet apart from mom, um, in the same room, but they're not allowed to breastfeed. They're not allowed to have any contact or anything like that until, um, well, honestly, until they go home and then we can't mm -hmm. really, they can self isolate themselves and self quarantine themselves while in the hospital to limit that cross contamination. That's what we're doing to prevent the, the infection moving from mom to baby. Yeah, Amanda, uh, I, if you can see the chat, Phil had a, a good question there. Uh, do you see what he asked there? Concerns, precautions that you take when you come mm -hmm. home? So when I come home, I, I mean, a lot of my coworkers are stripping down in the garage before they even come into the house. Um, I come in, I put everything in the washer and dryer right before I even come in. I come in before the kids wake up, usually because I work nights, um, which is a good thing. So I can come home, discard. I don't have anything that I wore on the unit with patients on because I have to wear hospital scrubs. So those go into the laundry at the hospital. But the clothing that I wear to and from wash right away um, and then shower and just that's basically it. But I mean, we're wearing masks the entire time. And if I were in a more, I know that some people are going to the extremes if they're doctors in the ER or if they're nurses and they have young children at home and things like that. And they're on the like front, front lines of COVID. Um, they, some people have been renting apartments or living separate from their families. Um, for long, long periods of time, because they just can't take the risk of bringing that home. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. I'm really Oof. doing Melanie's. Yeah. Uh, Melanie, I think I had a good question. She's just saying, you know, how have you seen God work during this time? And then I think it's kind of a two part question. What are some of the hardest things that you've been experiencing during this season? I think I know that God's at work in this, obviously. I mean, I, how can he not be? This is all things are through him. And 
I think that the camaraderie that we're seeing among my coworkers, um, pulling together as a team and really feeling like you are a servant and, you know, we are the hands and feet of Jesus right now. And we can care. And you, sorry, I'm going to tear up, but going into a COVID patient room, knowing what you're walking into, you really, you are saying prayers that, you know, I am, I'm doing God's will and God's work right now in a very tangible way. Um, so I have those moments throughout my shifts and um, many of my other coworkers do as well, which is wonderful. I mean, when do we truly get to be that and, and, and do that for a patient um, who's in such a vulnerable place? So I think that that's a great way to be um, connected with my creator and, and to feel like I am in the right place and doing the thing that he meant for me. Mm. Um, but those are also the hardest things too, is knowing what you are walking into and, um, but it's, it will always be okay. And, um, things are getting better. It seems like things are getting better and, um, it's just, we're helping each other out at work and being there as sounding boards and, um, just relief for one another. It's, it, there's so many good things that have come out of this too just being home with my family and seeing, you know, being really in it with them at home. And yeah, I don't know. I'm, I feel like I'm going all over the place, but yeah, no, there's, I, there's, I love it, there's blessings in yeah. all of it. There is, there's blessings in all of it, even though it's hard. Yeah. I mean, as you're sharing your heart and these things, it reminds me of Jesus going out to, to heal the sick. He's constantly mm-hmm. with the poor and those who are vulnerable, who are sick. And I think that's cool that as you're sharing some of your heart, it sounds like you are really getting to be the hands and feet of Jesus in this time and in such a critical way. And I think that's such a cool testimony for me to hear. I know it encourages my heart, even though it sounds so difficult that you are doing the work of Christ in these hospitals. And I think that's, that's just incredible. Thanks. I, I by no means am comparing myself to what Jesus does, or <laughs> what he's done for us, but it's, yeah, in a very tangible way, it definitely brings me closer to him mm-hmm. and to what, my yeah, you, you know, further level. You know, Amanda, uh, that perspective you shared, um, really genuinely uh, beautiful and, and kind of moved me, uh, honestly, when you talked about that, you know, that I did being the hands and feet of Jesus. And Luke, I thought the same thing. Mm-hmm. You know, Jesus, uh, work, you know, uh, being with the poor and the needy and, and those who were sick and those with leprosy, you know, and you got to understand, I mean, leprosy of the day mm-hmm. was completely, you know, uncurable. Yeah. And for Jesus to sit and touch and talk with someone who was a leopard and, and yeah, you're not Jesus, obviously, but like <laughs> you're, but you're sitting and you're talking and you're, and you're helping a mom uh, who, you know, it, like you said, there's been moms that have tested mm-hmm. positive and uh that is such a beautiful picture and it's like you are doing god's work and you're closer um to i I think you know this what you said it's like wow like i'm in communion with my creator as i'm ministering to those Mm. who need it the most absolutely Uh, really really beautiful thank you for sharing that's the power Mm -hmm. yeah i I agree with miwa and and anna and melanie Mm -hmm. like uh, what an amazing story and testimony and you are amazing Amanda and we're we're so glad that you're part of our church it's, it's pretty special you're pretty pretty special thanks um I saw a question earlier I think Monica I, I think this was a logistical question that Monica had a little while ago um she was asking about moms I think she was saying uh, are there pregnant moms that test positive um, mm-hmm. or are babies testing positive or is it all moms that come in that are testing positive? What's that look like? So not all moms are testing positive, but we do test every mom when they come in because we, in the very beginning, so like my unit is four different units together. So it's the per- perinatal special care unit, the labor and delivery postpartum. And then we are having the NICU. We've transformed our whole entire NICU into an ICU because we had an overflow of um, COVID patients. So we have all those nurses as well. So all of these units are, it's like a little hospital basically, because we have our own triage center. Like we have our own triage nurses. We have our own surgery. We have our own um, PACU, which is after anesthesia. So we see people that come in positive and we weren't knowing that they were positive. 
So that's why we're testing everybody before they come in. Um, and at that point, if you are positive, you go into a special side of our unit. Um, and then if you are under investigation, you go into another side of the unit, which basically those units are, they have extra levels of precautions built in. Um, so that's been a way to kind of tell, you know, who's positive, who's not. Um, we haven't had any babies test positive, but honestly, that doesn't mean that that's not happening. Uh, we just aren't testing. There's a lot of lot of non-testing outside of the hospitals. Mm -hmm. So that's just on our unit. Mm -hmm. uh, before we jump to Phil's question, just since we're already on the subject, uh, I thought Mel's question is, is a good segue. Mm -hmm. um, do, do all moms have to stay six feet apart or just the ones that test positive? So those patients that have tested positive would be in the COVID side unit and they would not be able to come out of those rooms. Their visitation or the visitors would not be able to come out of those rooms. Um, so they are completely isolated. They are, they don't even get a chance to be six feet away from somebody. Um, and then when they are ready medically to be discharged, then they will just, they would put a mask on and then they would be discharged out of the hospital. And then what about uh, all, do all moms do be separate from their babies, like regardless of whether, no. okay. No, sorry about that, I forgot that part. No, just the ones that are under investigation. So anybody basically who spikes a fever, which is quite common after delivery, um, is considered under investigation. So that's been a whole nother scenario that has been really rough um, because obviously they're not showing other signs of COVID, but they're getting these temperatures. So we have to, proceed as if they are positive. Those patients and the ones who are actually positive COVID patients are the ones who are separated from the baby. The babies are in the room, but and they're cared for by the person who is their um, support, but they are really not to have any contact with the mom. I mean, that would just be, I'm, I'm, you know, I have two kids, Amanda, you have three kids. I mean, I'm just trying to wrap my head around just what that's like as a parent, you know, as yeah. a mom, especially to not be able to hold your baby and, and yeah. all the rest. Now, can, can dads be in the room while the mom's giving birth? Yes. We have not limited, limited, um, the, they can have one support person through their, their stay. So switching in or out, um, no mom, like if you, per se, you don't have a spouse or, you know, a significant other that you can have a mom or a friend or a sister or whoever you want, but no one else can be um, banded with your group basically um, throughout this day. So we have not gotten to the point where we're limiting one person, but some, yeah. I've heard that some medical centers have. Wow. wow. Hmm. And, and so as so you're saying that, uh, the, that one person has to be the person the whole time. They can't like swap it out. Okay. Right. I mean, it has to be an extenuating circumstance where the person is switched out and they have to go through multiple levels of nursing seniority to, to get that approval. Hmm. Wow. Yeah, that sounds incredibly difficult, especially for those mothers who test positive and yeah. Yeah, but, I, I agree with Monica just saying, you know, so heart wrenching, yeah. I'm sure for all those people. Uh, Phil wants to know, though, how how are some of the ways the community has been encouraging you guys and your coworkers? He's saying they've seen and heard stories of people doing some creative things to encourage the, the hospitals and the people working there. Has there been anything for you guys specifically? Um, I know they've put up a bunch of signs sometimes like um, at the entrance of the um, hospital and they might be just um, regular people doing that or they'll have like groups of people putting up signs, you know, just encouragement, encouraging words and stuff. Um, and then also, um, you know, they're sending meals to the units and things. I mean, it's just the little, it's little things it's, and no one's expecting it, but it is just really nice to know that, you're being thought of and hmm. yeah supported well I'll, I'll say this again uh you are amazing amanda thank you uh and and all like all the nurses it, it's not just you it's not just your unit it's everyone at providence it's everyone mm -hmm. at southwest it's everyone at you know vancouver uh um you know it, it's just it's all those places everything that you guys are doing so um i, I want to kind of end because it's it's 5 30 now um 
and Melanie, yep, uh, read his li mind. <laughs> Melanie literally read my mind. Wow, that, see, it's like we, you're married. It's like we are so married <laughs> that she can be uh, completely in a different room and she knows what I'm so thinking. So married, where you're I'm going. extra married. Extra married. <laughs> You know, even you with the even with the ten second delay, because there's about there's about a ten second delay from when we talk to when it shows up on YouTube. Wow, uh, so funny. We, yeah, so when so when people um when people actually type in things, they're typing it ten seconds in the past uh, mm. to our anyway whatever. My point though, my point though is Melanie read my mind because um, what I wanted to say, Amanda, was uh, what are some ways that we as a church as people can be praying, uh, and not just for you, for all healthcare workers, what, what are some things that you guys just need prayer for? So I actually wrote a list because I was trying to be prepared in some way. Um, but so there are one, two, three, there's four main things, um, obviously for the health and safety of healthcare workers and also for their families when they go home, that everybody will stay safe, everybody will stay healthy so we can continue on doing what we're doing and, and protecting other people's families. Um, also, oh, this is a big one. Um, so not only are these moms experiencing, you know, who the ones who are putting the, being put into isolation, but there's so many patients in other units who don't have COVID, who are not allowed to have any visitors and they are suffering and they're ill and they can't have the comfort of anyone. So, uh, just to be... Um, praying for those patients who need that that support, um, who aren't getting that, the, all they have is the nurses and the, the doctors. And um, just don't forget about those people mm. because they really do need support. Um, Mom, okay, can you guys not play with this stuff right now? I'm so sorry. Can you like, go back out there for a second? Prayer I'm for your done. family. <laughs> yeah. For kids praying for the <laughs> Praying for the nurses with kids at home. <laughs> um, and then also for for us as nurses and staff to be able to make those meaningful connections with our patients. Because like I said, we are covered. We we can't have those, you know, even the nonverbal communication is so, it's so key. And we, that has been taken away from our practice. So um, just that we can build rapport and trust and, and really have those bonding moments with our patients. It's so imperative as nurses to have that and um, to, take, to take, take care of the whole patient. So um, if we can find other ways to just keep, keep that going is, hmm. would, be, would be a good thing to pray for. Cool. And then was there a fourth one or is so that? Management and administration. Um, they're constantly having to change. They're constantly having to uh, just adapt and roll out things that aren't necessarily what the staff want to hear. Um, so that I would ask that you pray for them as well because their jobs are not easy and they're just, they're trying to refine and adapt and do the best that they can, even though it's not, it's not easy. Mm -hmm. Uh, Luke, I think I saw you writing those down. Can you mm -hmm. um, summarize no, them real quick? Holiday. Sorry. Uh, and then, <laughs> and then uh, uh, Luke, if you can just read those out loud, and then maybe yeah. you and I can take some time and pray. Yeah, uh, hopefully I wrote them down right. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> one was just for the health and safety, especially of families and workers. Um, two, for the people who are currently in hospitals, not being able to have visitors yeah. or any support, really. Um, nurses making connections with their patients is difficult, and then the management admin. Did I get that right, Amanda? Yes, that okay. sounds great. See, great. if only I could say it just like that. <laughs> you no, did. See, you we... gave you gave the full <laughs> explanation. It was good. It was good. Yeah, you you can't you can't summarize something until you get the you can't summarize right. until you get the full context. <laughs> Long so. wording. <laughs> Um, yeah, so Luke, do you want to just kind of take uh, every other? Yeah, let's um, start praying. That'd be great. Yeah, and uh, we're. we're in, in the chat, you can just be praying along, or if you want to even type out a, a prayer for Amanda and for the healthcare workers, feel free to do that as well. But yep. let's go to the Lord. Father, thank you so much uh, that as a church we can meet together still digitally, and I just thank you for being able to meet with Amanda and hear her testimony. And while things are crazy and chaotic and they sound really difficult and even a little bit scary, Lord, uh, I just appreciate Amanda's testimony that you are working in the midst of that, that you are present. And even though the circumstances are ugly, uh, Lord, you are uh, 
uh, not a God who shies away from that. You are a God who works in the midst of uh, the ugliness and brokenness of our world. So we thank you for that. And specifically just want to lift up the health and safety of Amanda, uh, her family, and all uh, workers right now in the medical field. Keep them safe, keep them healthy, and especially as they go home to their families, uh, keep their whole families healthy and away from the virus. Hmm. God, I want to pray for those people who are in the hospital right now who have contracted COVID-19. And some of these people, God, they're uh, alone and they're forced isolation, or maybe, um, maybe they're in a place where, you know, family can't visit them, whatever that is. And uh, that's, that's hard, Uh, Lord, it's hard enough when you're going through an illness and a potential life threatening illness, but then to have to do that alone, um, God, give grace and mercy to those people uh, who are in isolation now that are in some cases fighting for their lives. And I would just add on, God, would you give wisdom and grace to uh, the the healthcare workers, the nurses who are going in and in some cases, the only human contact that these people have. Um, Lord, uh, great wisdom for, for these nurses on how to love and minister. And like Amanda was saying, to, to be the hands and feet of Jesus. Hmm. Yeah, Father, and I, I just add on to what Kevin says and just pray that you would help uh, nurses to make connections with patients right now. It's uh, especially difficult. It sounds like to, to do that when you're all masked up and suited up and you can't really see uh, each other's faces and expressions. And we know that nurses do a lot more than just care for a physical body. They care for the person uh, emotionally and spiritually. And um, those are important connections, Lord. and, And those things are hard to do right now. So, We just lift up all nurses to uh, just be light to each of their patients, um, whether they can do it easily or not, uh, what it just communicates to those who are in need and may it lift up the spirits of those who are sick and ill and um, probably are just feeling really down. May you use all nurses to bring joy and to bring peace to these situations. And finally, God, I just want to pray for the administration uh, and those uh, who are making decisions. And like Amanda was saying, sometimes it's it's literally every day. Uh, every day it's a new policy. Every day it's a new decision. And, and that can't be easy um, at, on a worker level. But also, uh, I, I imagine that's got to be hard at an administration level to, to just try to stay up to, to speed with the very changing, rapidly changing nature of this uh, coronavirus. And so, um, God, for those that are having to make decisions and make policies, grant them wisdom. And uh, Lord, may may they know when um, to pull back and when may they know when to have to, you know, be safe and when to push forward, Uh, you know, for our our government, our leaders, those who are in authority as they're making decisions on, you know, how long we're supposed to be doing the stay-at-home order, you know, when can we gather in groups? Um, wisdom for them as well, I want to pray. Uh, God, all of us, were in this together. And I'm so thankful for Amanda just sharing a little insight, just a little glimpse into how we're all in this together. And uh, God, we want to be, for, for those for those of us who are Christians, for those of us who follow the Lord, uh, God, we want to be um, vessels of you and we want to be light uh, in, in a world that is very, right now, a world that's very scared. Uh, in in a world where a lot of people are nervous and sometimes freaking out. God, we want to be light and we want to be truth. And we want to say, no, God is in control Mm -hmm. and God is good. Mm -hmm. And so we trust you in all these things. We pray in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Thank you guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. Well, thank you, Amanda, for being with us today. I think it was definitely uplifting, encouraging for me. I'm sure you, Kevin, as well, and everyone in the chat that was hanging out with us tonight. I hope that it was just a good time for you guys to be encouraged to hear how things are going. And Kevin is raising his hand. What's <laughs> yeah, up? I, I, I just, if I can be so bold uh, yeah. for those of you on the chat, um, if you could just uh, type in a word of encouragement to Amanda, I, I know some of you, you know, have said thanks and thanks for all you do, but maybe if there's like a sentence or so that you can just, you know, give to Amanda. Amanda, what I'm thinking is, uh, th- this chat that's coming up, you know, uh, when we're off the live stream, you can actually mm-hmm. copy, uh, you can copy the whole chat. Do that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and I, and, and not to puff your head up or not to like, you know, give you an ego trip, but I think sometimes I imagine it's gotta be discouraging. It's gotta be hard. And I was just thinking this might be a good thing that you could print out 
and mm -hmm. have in your locker or have, you know, by your bed, just some words of encouragement. So if I could be so bold and just ask our, our chat right now yeah. to just type, type out one sentence, type out two sentences, something to just encourage Amanda uh, as she goes about her day uh, in, in the coming weeks. And, and, and I'll just say, I, I know people are chatting right now, Allison, Davini, thank you uh, for the sacrifice you're making. And, and I, I would just simply say that as well, Amanda, um, you are serving our community. You are serving people that are vulnerable. You are serving moms that sometimes are in, in their first pregnancy and mm -hmm. they're trying to figure this out. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you for how you serve our community, for how you serve our people. Thanks. I appreciate that. We don't, I don't, I certainly don't think it's a sacrifice because this is what I love to do. And this is, I love to care for my patients and my people, especially ones who are just having babies. So, um, this is, I, it's a privilege to be able to, to do what I do, yeah. but I appreciate the kind words. Yeah. And I, I'm just reading some of these chats that are coming yeah. up. This is pretty cool <laughs> to see. Um, Sharon Hafner, who's also in the, the healthcare industry, she, she mm -hmm. works uh, doing hospice care and, uh, oh, man. um, yeah. yeah. And I, I just want to say, Sharon, thank you. Uh, I, I know you said you're tearing up a little bit. I'm, I'm guessing because a lot of this hits close to home, uh, because Sharon, mm -hmm. you're doing a lot of the same work and, uh, Sharon even had to care for a, um, a COVID-19 patient not too long ago, but, um, so yeah, hard. uh, boy, really good words. Joshua one nine. Um, yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Bob, thank you for your commitment That's to awesome. prayer. Yeah, there's some good stuff here. Hopefully, Amanda, you can copy and paste yeah. this and print yeah. some of this. That's amazing. Thank you, Church. Thanks. Yeah, wow. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it very, very much. I kind of don't know what to do with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, ho hopefully, hopefully you can be encouraged, and hopefully this is a source of strength in, in the coming yeah. weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, boy, we love you, Amanda. We're thankful Thanks. for you. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Yeah, thank you, Church, for being here. Thank you for en encouraging Amanda and just... I think this is a good reminder to all of us to keep encouraging all of those in the medical field that we know that are within our church and maybe just neighbors or family members. Uh, mm. Would you guys just use the, some of the same things you've already said and encourage those others that maybe are having a hard time right now? And uh, as a church, hopefully we can really impact our community and really support people right now. And, and as Amanda is doing, we can all be the light of Jesus and hands and feet of Jesus in one way or another. So uh, thank you guys so much for being with us tonight. Thank you again, Amanda. Um, if you want to say goodbye, last shout out. <laughs> Hi, guys. Thank you. And, and, just, and just to be clear, uh, I was going to say, just to be clear, the uh, Chris Whippin comment uh, that was, was actually... That was actually Amanda. Uh, yeah. Oh my gosh, could you imagine if you wrote that? <laughs> Chris is like, I'll go ahead and take the uh, credit here Good for Good clarification, everything. yes. I can't get his head off the thing, I don't know. <laughs> you know, it's a great thing, Chris. He looks really good in the oh, suit. I love and it. Yeah, yeah, he's so professional. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> well, that's a great way to end it. Thank you for joining oh, man, us, Amanda. Yes. Thanks. All right, Thank good you night, Lord family. Take care.